Hey guys, Futureman19 here. This will be my third video in my series, Lessons from the Future, where I talk about how we can follow a path towards enlightenment. So if you haven't seen them yet, you should watch those first to get the context of what I will be talking about in this short video. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on some scriptures in the Bible because I don't know if you can't see it yet, but we are in what the Bible calls the end times, where I believe we are in the last year of tribulation, which is a seven year period of time where all of these prophecies start happening in rapid order. If you need to catch up on the last six years, then you will have to start over on my channel and watch all my videos to see the full picture, and why I believe we are currently in tribulation which most Christians would probably disagree with because most Christians believe that they will be raptured up before facing any sort of trial or tribulation, as if God will spare them any hardship because they believe that they are so special. Anyway, I have chosen to call this video The Wrath of God. I think this theme is appropriate considering what's happening around our world at the moment with wars and rumors of wars going on. The main reason why most Christians believe that the rapture will occur before the seven-year tribulation period is because of a couple of scriptures that are taken out of context. Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And also, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians believe that they will not receive God's wrath, and therefore will be raptured before the tribulation period. But again, you have to put everything into context. You can't be like every other Christian who reads one passage of scripture and bases their entire reasoning on that one scripture. You have to put everything into context. Now, if you have been following my channel, I have been talking for years about 923 date, which is the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 prophecy about the woman clothed with the sun. This is the prophecy that sparks the beginning of the tribulation timeline, which is why the prophecy had to be so specific so you wouldn't be deceived. Now, I won't go into the details of the 923 prophecy, because if you want to know, then go ahead and watch my past videos. But I want to point out a scripture that in the same chapter, chapter 12 in Revelation, that talks about what happens after this prophecy is fulfilled. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now this is why Christians got it all confused. There is no doubt God's wrath that will be coming. God's wrath is effectively judgment day when he punishes the wicked. But God's wrath occurs after tribulation because God doesn't start punishing the wicked until after they take the mark of the beast. The vials don't start being poured until the mark of the beast has polluted almost everyone living except for the elect. Because, you see, it says that the devil has come down unto you, unto earth, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time which is seven years long. The beast only has seven years to spread the mark and for the Antichrist to do his damage. So God is not sparing anyone from the devil's wrath, because the devil's wrath is the test. Just as Job was tried, so shall we. If you forgot about the story of Job and why it is important, God basically lets the devil test Job to see if he really was a faithful person. This same test is being applied to all of us today, and sadly, most of us are failing it miserably. But don't worry, there is still about a year left to repent. If you took the mark, then you must repent. If you voted for the Antichrist, then you must repent. If you believe that you are special and God will not allow you to be tested, then you have already failed. This is the final test. And I do not want you to be deceived. None of what is happening here around the world matters. Do not become caught up in the world. Do not get sucked into that whirlwind. As Christ said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Those who have been led by fear for the past few years have fallen victim to the mark of the beast because they were afraid to lose their lives. 
Luke 21, 26 through 28, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen and good luck to you all during this time. And now I would like to read to you a scripture in closing from the Book of Mormon, Mormon chapter 9. And now I speak also concerning those who do not believe in Christ. Behold, will ye believe in the day of your visitation? Behold, when the Lord shall come, yea, even that great day when the earth shall be rolled together as a scroll, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, yea. In that great day when ye shall be brought to stand before the Lamb of God, then will ye say that there is no God, then will ye longer deny the Christ, or can ye behold the Lamb of God? Do ye suppose that ye shall dwell with him under a consciousness of your own guilt? Do ye suppose that ye could be happy to dwell with that holy being when your souls are racked with the consciousness of guilt that ye have ever abused his laws? Behold, I say unto you that ye would be more miserable to dwell with a holy and just God under a consciousness of your filthiness before him than ye would to dwell with the damned souls in hell. For behold, when ye shall be brought to see your nakedness before God and also the glory of God and the holiness of Jesus Christ, it will kindle a flame of unquenchable fire upon you, O oh, then ye unbelieving, turn ye unto the Lord, cry mightily unto the Father in the name of Jesus, that perhaps ye may be found spotless, pure, fair, and white, having been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb at that great and last day. And again I speak unto you who deny the revelations of God, and say that they are done away, that there are no revelations, nor prophecies, nor gifts, nor healing, nor speaking with tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Behold, I say unto you, He that denieth these things knoweth not the gospel of Christ. Yea, he has not read the scriptures. If so, he does not understand them. For do we not read that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And in him there is no variableness, neither shadow of changing. And now, if ye have imagined up unto yourselves a God who doth vary, and in whom there is shadow of changing, then have ye imagined up unto yourselves a God who is not a God of miracles. But behold, I will show unto you a God of miracles, even the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And it is that same God who created the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are. Behold, he created Adam, and by Adam came the fall of man, and because of the fall of man came Jesus Christ, even the Father and the Son. And because of Jesus Christ came the redemption of man. And because of the redemption of man, which came by Jesus Christ, they are brought back into the presence of the Lord. Yeah, this is wherein all men are redeemed, because the death of Christ bringeth to pass the resurrection, which bringeth to pass a redemption from an endless sleep, from which sleep all men shall be awakened by the power of God when the trump shall sound and they shall come forth, both small and great, and all shall stand before his bar, being redeemed and loosed from this eternal band of death, which death is a temporal death. And then cometh the judgment of the Holy One upon them. And then cometh the time that he that is filthy shall be filthy still, and he that is righteous shall be righteous still. He that is happy shall be happy still, and he that is unhappy shall be unhappy still. And now, O oh, all ye that have imagined up unto yourselves a God who can do no miracles, I would ask of you, have all these things passed of which I have spoken? Has the end come yet? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, and God has not ceased to be a God of miracles. Behold, are not the things that God hath wrought marvelous in our eyes? Yea, and who can comprehend the marvelous works of God? Who shall say that it was not a miracle that by his word the heaven and the earth should be? And by the power of his word man was created of the dust of the earth. And by the power of his word have miracles been wrought. And who shall say that Jesus Christ 
did not do many mighty miracles, and there were many mighty miracles wrought by the hands of the apostles. And if there were miracles wrought then, why has God ceased to be a God of miracles and yet be an unchangeable being? And behold, I say unto you, he changeth not. If so, he would cease to be God, and he ceaseth not to be God and is a God of miracles. And the reason why he ceaseth to do miracles among the children of men is because that they dwindle in unbelief and depart from the right way and know not the God in whom they should trust. Behold, I say unto you that whoso believeth in Christ, doubting nothing whatsoever, he shall ask the Father in the name of Christ, it shall be granted him. And this promise is unto all, even unto the ends of the earth. For behold, thus said Jesus Christ, the Son of God, unto his disciples who should tarry, yea, and also to all his disciples in the hearing of the multitude, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And whosoever shall believe in my name, doubting nothing unto him, will I confirm all my words, even unto the ends of the earth. And now behold, who can stand against the works of the Lord? Who can deny his sayings? Who will rise up against the almighty power of the Lord? Who will despise the works of the Lord? Who will despise the children of Christ? Behold, all ye who are despisers of the works of the Lord, for ye shall wonder and perish. O then despise not and wonder not, but hearken unto the words of the Lord, and ask the Father in the name of Jesus, for what things soever ye shall stand in need. Doubt not, but be believing, and begin as in times of old, and come unto the Lord with all your heart, and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before him. Be wise in the days of your probation. Strip yourselves of all uncleanness. Ask not that ye may consume it on your lusts, but ask with a firmness unshaken that ye will yield to no temptation, but that ye will serve the true and living God. See that ye are not baptized unworthily. See that ye partake not of the sacrament of Christ unworthily, but see that ye do all things in worthiness, and do it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And if ye do this and endure to the end, ye will in no wise be cast out. Behold, I speak unto you as though I speak from the dead, for I know that ye shall have my words. Condemn me not because of mine imperfection, neither my Father because of his imperfection, neither them who have written before him. But rather give thanks unto God that he hath made manifest unto you our imperfections, that ye may learn to be more wise than we have been. And now behold, we have written this record according to our knowledge in the characters which are called among us the reformed Egyptian, being handed down and altered by us according to our manner of speech. And if our plates had been sufficiently large, we should have written in Hebrew. But the Hebrew hath been altered by us also. And if we could have written in Hebrew, behold, ye would have had no imperfection in our record. But the Lord knoweth the things which we have written, and also that none other people knoweth our language. And because that none other people knoweth our language, therefore he hath prepared means for the interpretation thereof. And these things are written, that we may rid our garments of the blood of our brethren, who have dwindled in unbelief. And behold, these things which we have desired concerning our brethren, yea, even their restoration to the knowledge of Christ, are according to the prayers of all the saints who have dwelt in the land. And may the Lord Jesus Christ grant that their prayers may be answered according to their faith. And may God the Father remember the covenant which he hath made with the house of Israel. And may he bless them forever through faith on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.